In this video I'm going to show you the 5 most beautiful symphony intros of all time and because I don't want this video to be completely demonetized, I have to learn to play them all by myself on the piano. The first one is Dvořák Symphony number no. 8, unbelievably beautiful. The symphony is in G major, but it starts in G minor. In bar 10 we already switch to the key A flat major for a very short amount of time. And then in bar 17 we are already in G major and it feels like we are already so far away from the beginning because we already switched to A flat major in between. So a lot going on in the first 21 bars and Dvořák he knew what he was doing, he knew what effect it would have on people. One thing I really enjoy is this one chord in bar 4. It just sounds awesome. Here we can see that Dvořák falls down the circle of 5th, B major, E flat major, A flat major, D flat major. That's a lot of flats for a piece in G major. And it's not a coincidence that the bass melody is also going down as well, together with the circle of 5th. It's just very thought through. In the end, it doesn't matter what you do in theory, as long as it sounds great. You can break every rule of composing, as long as you make the listener feel something. The second one. This was Symphony Fantastique from Hector Berlioz, one of my favorite symphonies of all time. It's more of a tone poem than a symphony, but the dimensions are inspired by Beethoven's symphonies. Fun fact, it was just composed six years after Beethoven's ninth, but if you listen to Symphony Fantastique, it sounds entirely different than anything else at that time. In my opinion, Symphony Fantastique is one of the first, if not the first, real romantic symphony. I'm quoting now from the Baron writer intro of the score, the Symphony Fantastique recounts the experience of a young artist of particular sensitivity who falls under the spell of a woman of ideal beauty who appears to him always in the form of a theme named the Idee Fix, an obsessive melody that provides the main material of the first movement. First appearing in the violence in unison with the flute against a sparse, jacked accompaniment in the lower strings which expresses the turbulence of the artist's spirit. Because of the program he wrote for the symphony that explains the story behind each movement, you can guess that the young artist is actually Berlioz himself. So it is basically an autobiography of his unrequited love for the Irish actress Harriet Smithson. In fact, a few years later, after composing Ballet Symphony Fantastique, they were introduced to each other and got married a few years later. Why do I like the beginning so much? It's quite delicate, this C minor, then the subtle or not so subtle tempo changes. There are already a lot of different characters. We have this 
sad beginning, then verse 17 this hopeful, more forward-looking theme that gets demolished pretty fast. Probably whatever the person in the music wanted, he didn't get it. It's a constant up and down of emotions, the sooner you get something, you lose it again. And it just really resonates with one of the core fundamental aspects of being human, the wish to be loved. This was Bruckner's 7th symphony. I fucking love this intro. I even wrote my bachelor thesis about this piece. It's in E minor and in bar 5 we are already in C major for a brief moment. So the actual tonic gets destabilized. As it is so often with Bruckner, after a moment of exciting modulations follows an almost too simple cadence. Here to B major. Then he goes completely crazy with the so-called Himmelsleiter or Klangtreppe, a musical pattern that can be repeated to infinity. This pattern goes back to the so-called parallelism a model that is self-contained and is based on parallel thirds. As you can see, the bass moves along with the thirds up a fourth or down a fifth. Compared to the other ones, this seems more consistent in terms of orchestration and what happens in the music. Nonetheless, it has a very strong effect on me every time I listen to it. The fourth one. This was Dvorak with the symphony number no. 9. I said it before, I'm saying it again. There are very few pieces I would consider as perfect, but this one is perfect. Everything, down to the last minute details. For me, you can really hear a picture of nature drawn into the music. Dvorak's 9th is inspired by his first visit of America and is famously known under the title From the New World. The intro of Dvorak's 9th slowly builds up to the first climax, directly going into the main theme of the first movement. And he does that by grouping the different instrumental sections. He first starts with the low strings in the beginning, then the woodwinds go on with this theme. In bar 10, the theme changed and the orchestra is divided into three sections. The strings, the timpani and the wind instruments. And you can hear this interaction of the different instrumental sounds with each other. Because they are divided into instrument specific groups, the contrast is very high. In bar 15, the theme and how the instruments are combined with each other changed again. They are not strictly separated into strings and woodwinds anymore, because of the horn switching to the string section. So everything is a bit more of a mixed round sound. Then from bar 19 to 23, there's this huge build up, the whole orchestra plays, and you even have some polyrhythm. In the end, the timpani and the strings resolve this epic sound into the iconic theme of the first movement in bar 24. The fifth one.
who would have guessed that? Tchaikovsky's Fifth Symphony. Even if I think that Tchaikovsky's Sixth Symphony is extremely dramatic and sad, I think the fifth one is even more depressive. Somehow the symphony makes you feel the things that are missing in your life in a very hurtful way. Whatever it is. Love, meaning, family or your job. You have this beautiful melody in the clarinet here and just the strings underneath. It's quite simple, probably because Tchaikovsky adored Mozart and he was known for his simplicity. In the first four bars you just have E minor and A minor, nothing fancy. It's how Tchaikovsky plays with this, his instrumentation, this suffering melody, therein lies the beauty. Also the dynamics are quite Mozart-like. If you look at bar 5, you can see how the melody fades out there two times right behind each other. It happens quite a lot harmonically there, it builds intensity, but it gets quieter. That's somehow strange and makes this part so special. It's like a musical oxymoron, merging two things that don't fit together. More intensity and a decrescendo. And Tchaikovsky did this on purpose. Click this video right here next, thanks for watching and we see each other on the next one.